I, I want to start by saying that when I give glory to God for everything, saying all things we should give thanks. It didn't really go um, as a plan, but then it's okay. Well, your season best was 1.94. 194. And um, yes. today you did 192. What, what really was the problem, you know, on the field? Um, well, I noticed in my warm up that I was going flat. I wasn't taking off the way I did two days ago. So it wasn't just clicking in my warm up. So I guess that's what affected me. Um, when the jump started. Okay. So, I mean, what do you take from here, the World Championships? What do you take from here going forward? Um, well, I'm happy to be here and uh, going back home. I'm just going to go back and try and keep training, keep doing training harder and uh, make sure that um, by the time we meet again, I'm going to give them a run for their money. <laughs> Well, let's, let's talk about the ladies, you know, who jumped. About three of them have been jumping since February 2003. Looks like a very long rivalry. Amongst them, I mean, what, what is really unique about them and how they high jump? Um, the thing is this, um, when it comes to high jump, they, they even go way back to the land. If you go and look at Blanca, she's been jumping since 1999, I think. So, high jump, the more you jump, the more you get, you get experience. And high jump comes with age, actually. I've noticed that the older we get, the better we jump. Okay. Well, you've been to several international competitions. Now, how is it like for an African high jumper to be competing at the, at the high level? What does it take? Um, it takes a lot of determination, a lot of training, a lot of self-motivation, because back home, things don't really go well the way they should go. Like most of these athletes, I talk to them sometimes, they will just decide like, okay, um, I need to go to this country to go train. And they're getting all the funding they need. But back home, we don't. We don't get all that funding. And uh, right now, this, this season in particular, I had to pay my way through everything I did myself because there was no money coming from anywhere. So I did everything myself. I found myself through this season. And um, so I'm happy, personally speaking, I'm happy, I'm satisfied that I came out here, I got to the finals. I may not have um, jumped higher than what I did right now in the finals, but I'm happy about it because I know that I'm fulfilled. I love jumping and I'm going to go back home and get myself together and prepare for next season. Can you give us an idea, not the exact figure, but how much it costs you know, to prepare for the World Championships? Well, um, I can't really say specifically because it depends. So many things have to go in place. So many things have to go in place. Um, you need... Um, so many things have to go in place. You might decide that, okay, um, I need to go work with a particular coach because I know he's more technically sound. Do you understand that? Because back home, when was the last time my coach went for um, a, training co uh, a coaching course? I can't even remember. I've, I've been working with my coach since 2003. And since 2003, I have not seen him been to any coaching course that has to do with high jump. Yes, he reads. He reads a lot. That, uh, that, that I appreciate him. But he goes into, he go into the internet and he research on high jump, try to research, try to keep himself updated. But then the Federation should be able to send him out. Go out there, go to Europe, see what they're doing out there. That's the only way we can improve. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and you expect an improvement. It's not going to happen. Never. It's not going to happen. I have a coach in Italy. While I was in Italy 2011, he went to, he went to coaching course, coaching seminar about three times. Within how many months I was there? I was there less than about four, five, four months. He already went to three different um, courses. He went to three different seminars. I think one, one, one of the um, seminars, Stephen Holmes was there. He came back, he started teaching me new things that he learned from Stephen Holmes. So that's what we need. Seriously, that's what we need. We can't, we can't expect to jump, we can't expect us to jump high to do good when there is nothing, like no support. You're not, you're not training the coaches, you're not supporting the athletes, and you want them to do good, it's not possible.
Corinne, thank you very much for this interview. We wish you well. Will you be at the All Africa again? Yeah, I will. I will buy those of us. Well, all the best. Yeah, thank you.